Hailing Frequencies Open, and welcome to Star Trek Discoverage, the live podcast that boldly goes into excruciating detail about this week's episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. I'm your host, Aaron Coker, a.k.a. Caliban, and how many times has Ensign Flipper heard, I bet you think you're faster than lightning, kid, a real bluefin special, young, dumb, and full of chum. <laughs> Sitting in again t- tonight in place of my usual co-host, Ella Pearson, is my co-host on the Just Enough Trope podcast. She's also the host of the Sailor Noob podcast and she's a frequent Enterprising Individuals and Discoverage guest. It's Mika and Hana. Mika, welcome back to Discoverage. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you back. Uh, Ella is out. Uh, she's not feeling well. She's uh, been fighting something, and so she's hopefully she'll get better, and our best wishes to her. Yeah, I hope you're feeling Sometimes better, Ella. Sometimes you wish for that uh, the little wand that they have on Star Trek. Yeah. It just waves all your problems away. Yeah, no kidding. Or like you just get like much. get the little hypo spray and then you're, you're <laughs> a fine. A little shot of this. Just, just a instant. little wave of that. Always shot in the neck too. Um, uh, you get it in the arm. I Yeah, but I feel like the vast majority is like right in the neck, you know, and like <laughs> I, apparently it doesn't hurt at all. So. Yeah, like a, like a blow dart. Yeah, it right. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're hoping for that for her, whatever that was. <laughs> uh, what's uh, What's been going on in the world of Just Enough Trope recently? Uh, yeah, what has been going on? Um, wow. Um, well... Things are swirling around. Things are swirling around, and um, we, like, are just recently... Um, we've been... Uh, doing some Patreon shows for Halloween huh. and uh, some kind of scary movies uh, that uh, I haven't seen before. Oh. So, um, and we've been talking about those, and one of which was uh, Uncle John's The Fog. <laughs> I think you mean uh, John Carpenter, right? Yes. I yes, I do. related, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we like to refer to him as Uncle John. because yeah, Grandpa he, John. He, yeah, maybe he is Grandpa John now, uh, but he is near and dear to our hearts. The fog, not so much. It's okay, huh. I think, is kind of how a, we a, felt. A harsh lesson, a harsh, a harsh take for for the fog. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, the James Bond movie came out recently. Yes, the James Bond movie Finally. came out recently, belatedly. Yes, and um, we reviewed that on our our last episode, and. Uh, um, good stuff. Wow, what do I what do I say? What what can you say? <laughs> what can I even what what can, what, what, can I what, say? what what is this? <laughs> <laughs> is this a James Bond movie? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, it just wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't as. It wasn't what I hoped for. L- let me put it that way. I guess nicely. not a grand finale so much as a grand finally. <laughs> Yeah, right. I've been waiting to use that for a while. Yeah, <laughs> you had that pent up. I feel and ready like we've been go. going through a couple things that have, like, uh, you know, a couple uh, third acts, a couple last movies in a chain, and yeah, it just was like, oh, 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 okay. I well, mean, I guess there will be a new one in a couple years. <laughs> but the the weird thing is, like, I heard that they haven't even started discussing. Who is going to be the replacement yet? Like, I, I I know that we don't know, but they haven't even started. They're not going to look at it until sometime next year. Well, they certainly know what they're doing. That's how they delivered something uh, as satisfying as No Time to Die. Well, at least the Billie Eilish song is good. Um, but uh, the, the movie is not so satisfying. <laughs> well, you can't win them all. No. I think James Bond would be the first one to tell you that. Yeah, no, you can't. And uh, I bet he is happy to be done. And, <laughs> uh, and also knowing that he doesn't have to slit his wrists now because yeah. he is... <laughs> yeah, he yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is free from his bond. Yeah. That's... Okay, good. What, what, was he working with the bank or something like that? or <laughs> Just one bond. No, I guess it's just... The bond is his bond. Yeah. Right. He feels like he's in bonds. Exactly. Yes. Bondage? Yeah. Ooh. That's a new direction for the series. The, yeah. Let's move on to Star Trek news. Let's. Uh, there's not really a lot going on this week. I lied. There's a ton going on this week. Let's talk about <laughs> two of the major stories. Uh, one of them being the announcement that Robert Beltran, Mr. Chakotay himself, will be appearing on the Star Trek Prodigy animated series. I thought we knew this already. All right. We haven't talked about it on this show yet. Oh, okay. All right. I, I, I got really nervous there when you started... 
I was like, oh, God, what else? Because I don't... I'm not the hugest uh, harsh words fan for Robert of Beltran. And, and Bel- <laughs> Robert Beltran is he's he was kind of a creeper. Um, I mean, not like so bad as like some other people in Hollywood, but like the views like... of Nico and Hannah do not reflect the views of the Discovery podcast. <laughs> well, he but he like like went to the writers and like wanted that's let's that's you know where's your source on that? Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Um, Sorry. Wow. I, I brought in my own James Bond to assassinate <laughs> all the enthusiasm here. I think, Are you excited about this? I think the main – no. But I think the main <laughs> I, the main uh, thrust of this uh, sort of uh, – this, this recent nugget of news is that he will be uh, – you know, his voice, and he won't be appearing, but he'll be um, portraying Captain Chakotay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, um, can anybody get into Starfleet? Just anybody. <clears throat> Except for the people who uh, f- quit or flunk out. I'm so looking that behind can, me like there's so somebody else So they can else prove can themselves this. later and then just be promoted into something in Starfleet. Like, if a guy who quit Starfleet <laughs> and then joined a terrorist organization for a good five or six years and then yeah. six or seven years later came back from the Delta Quadrant and said, I helped. Uh, you go, oh, great. Thanks for your help. And then you call everybody in for the medal ceremony. I mean, and, that's... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Chakotay, I'm on the list. Uh, I don't see you here, sir. Like, he gets a letter. He doesn't get a medal. You helped. Thanks for helping. Right. But like, what, now he's just... Oh, what, what, he's just back in Starfleet now? Oh, just give him a ship. <laughs> Apparently. I don't know. Can anybody get into Starfleet? I think the answer is... Yes. Definitively, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody can try, at the very least. And I don't know how difficult their training is. Although... Oh, it's tough. Sometimes you have to pull a guy through a through a pipe and it's spraying stuff on you. And then you have to say to another guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? What is that referring to? You're in, Wesley. You saved one <laughs> right, guy. Right, right, right. Um, didn't, He's like, a legacy. So. Yeah. Didn't Belana get, like... Did she leave or did she get kicked out? I can't remember which one it was. I think she just quit. Did she just right? quit? Or she maybe was she just got like, screw this. Maybe she got expelled. I guess I don't know the, the I don't detailed remember. backstories of all the Voyager characters, but I know, but I But know I do she... know that it just seems and I've argued before that, you know, Starfleet there has to have a a roster of of millions, right? Yes. They must have like just hundreds of thousands of HR people to, to keep track of the people that it would take to crew all the ships that are going to cover an entire quadrant or a quadrant and a half. And so, you know, they they do always say, you know, we always need good people, you know, or when a captain wants to leave or something like that. They're like, you know, it's gonna, we're going to miss you. We can use you out there. We need yeah. you. But it's just like, well, it's kind of a complicated backstory for this guy, you know? Uh, it's very complicated. Do you think... But then it was all obviated by them dropping the entire premise of Voyager, like, one episode in where they went, oh, we're all... Ha- everybody's happy and fine now. I know. All these McKee terrorists are just... They're just going to work I feel like... Us. So if going by that... Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Bring them right back in. Yeah, right. <sighs> if they had kept the, the... Just, like we're not cool with this or like we're fighting to, to be a cohesive crew thing going a little bit longer. I think that that would have been a really interesting part of Voyager, but they, but they didn't. Well, it's the same old song. I know. But uh, that doesn't mean that we're not enthusiastic for Voyager 2, which it seems like uh, <laughs> Star Trek Prodigy is I am quickly turning into. I for Prodigy. Um, even if Chakotay is in it, uh, I am still excited for it. Um, and nothing... I'll keep an open mind. I am excited for it as well. And guess what? We're going to talk about it later. All right. Sounds good. And uh, let's see. Some other story. Some guy named uh, Bill Shatner went into space. Who? I think he was on, oh, he's a Boston legal star. I, people, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this tells you everything you need to know about either the internet or just the state of comedic intelligence. Both. On Earth. Uh, when everybody has access to something, you're always going to find, oh, okay, okay, people don't get it. But the Vulture, you know, the website, the Vulture, trying to be, quote unquote, funny. And it's like, stay in your lane, guys. Yeah, I didn't get it. I I was like, I was like. All right. So the rest of this will be directed directly at the person that I'm doing this show with. (laughs) People like, oh, I don't know. Bleak on, schmeek on Hannah, let's, we'll call her. Okay. uh, Don't get that they're doing a bit. Now, I admit, it's a bad bit. It's not a good bit. Right. But it's still a bit. 
Yeah. And there's two reactions. One, <laughs> uh, I think that maybe you're uh, missing something. <laughs> That's one reaction. And the other uh -huh. reaction is, oh, uh, no, I think he's the rescue 911 guy. It's like, you don't have to tag a bad joke like that. <laughs> you can just let that go. That's okay. But anyway, it's quite an accomplishment. <laughs> it depends on your definition of space. We've kind of lowered that bar. But he is absolutely yes. the oldest person to be put in a rocket and shot up into the air. Um, another, he broke wow. the record of somebody else who was, I think... In her 70s? Maybe in her early 80s, I'm not sure. Mm. And um, she had ridden, I think, on another Blue Origin rocket uh, earlier. Um, I don't know okay. the whole story, but I think that she was somebody who wanted to be an astronaut um, back in the day. She was a scientist and uh, was not allowed into the program, but then got to go on this Blue Origin thing recently. So, But I mean, yeah, I mean, cool. like, if you're going to send somebody, I guess you're going to send Captain Kirk to space. Uh, I mean, I get it. I get it. I Only do. Captain, I just, not Super Admiral Kirk. I, it's just they'll hard. take anybody. I know it's hard for me to be like super excited about anything Bill Shatner does. So um. he's bringing the hot heat tonight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I love Kirk, and I I love him playing Kirk, but he's he is a spicy individual. He brings all the spice <laughs> himself. So yeah, but don't you like it when a spicy old man? Uh, mm, a real mm, a zaddy. Uh, <laughs> he, he's launched into, he touches the face of God and he comes back and he gets a little weepy. Don't we like to see a blowhard, like, also feel human emotion? Well, is he going to put his arm around Bezos and be like, yes, yeah, we, they sh did that. We, we should put garbage in space. They did that. Oh, I don't know about that, but... <laughs> Uh, he doesn't have any policy uh, ideas Thank that he's God. immediately ready to uh, spout when he comes back. But, you know, I won't read his quotes, but his it was the equivalent of, you know, what we hear when people go and they see Earth from outside of Earth and they go, oh, my God, like, that's that's it. Oh, that's like, cool. we're all we have. And it's it's important that we take care of each other. And he didn't, like, <laughs> apologize for being a jerk for all these years. But, uh, you know, I don't expect we that. sent Captain Kirk to space. We can shut yeah. it all down now. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, mission accomplished. I mean, that's cool. And I, I can imagine that, it, you know, playing Captain Kirk and for all these years and then getting actually to go into space, that's probably pretty neat. I guess. So. He says he's never watched the show. So I don't know how much he really cares about that. But, all right. but yeah, he went to space. Okay. They're like, no, no, we, we don't have room for your horse. I'm sorry. That would be like at least three seats right there. But he's back and he's fine. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, but what did he bring with him? <laughs> let's talk about our, let's talk about our episode for tonight. We've just seen the season finale of the second season of Lower Decks, an episode called First First Contact, and we're here to talk all about it. But first, as always, a warning: we're setting a course for the spoiler zone listeners, so be warned. We're glad you've decided to join us, but if you haven't seen the episode, spoilers are incoming. The official synopsis for First First Contact is, in the season two finale, the USS Cerritos is tasked to aid another starship on a first contact mission. This episode was written by Mike McMahon, and it was directed by Jason Zurek. Zurek previously directed the season two episodes, Strange Energies, Mugato Gamato, and Where Pleasant Fountains Lie. The start date for this episode is 58130.6, and here is a fact or two, or actually just one, about the episode. Uh, the ship that we see in this episode, the USS Archimedes, hmm. is an Obana-class vessel, which is a uh, new class invented by the show. It's inspired okay. by the Excelsior class, which it looks a lot like, yeah. uh, but it is larger and has some other changes. Uh, okay. And it was named for the Lower Decks art designer, Nolan Obana. Well, that's cool. It's a little weird that... I mean, nobody ever wants to see the Excelsior class go out of service. But at this point, the Excelsior class is still in service <laughs> in Starfleet yeah. of the late 24th century. This you, is the, you mean like Discovery in the future? This is the government mule of yeah. like starships. It's the um, M1911 of starships. Whatever you want to say. Like mm -hmm. it's just still still around. Yeah. Why aren't all star, starships just the Excelsiors? <laughs> Uh, good question. Um, because we're doing a show about a we gotta California separate class. Oh, so you gotta get it up there. Yeah, I know. You gotta do all kinds of things. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about the cast for this episode. Uh, <laughs> we knew it was gonna happen, and here it is. Lysia Naff has returned to the Star Trek franchise mm -hmm. as her character, Sonia Gomez. Yeah. Who first appeared in the TNG season two episodes, Q-Who, Q-Who, Q-Who. And Samaritan Snare. Mm -hmm. 
and she uh, is back. Now, she was not out of extended media in uh, Starfleet novels, specifically in the Star Trek uh, Starfleet Corps of Engineers series. She was a first officer on the uh, the ship of the uh, that series, the Da Vinci, which is a saber-class ship. Okay. And then she later became captain of the Da Vinci uh, in the Star Trek Destiny novels. Okay. So you can thank uh, Mr. David Mack for promoting Sonia Gomez. There you go. Very nice. I guess That's... we could still figure that out, right? And then she transfers from Da Vinci to... To Archimedes. Right. It all fits into canon still. They're, they're, they're getting rid of the books. Yeah. <laughs> they're getting rid right. of all that stuff. But oh, anyway, boy. it kind of works. Uh, Phil Lamar, uh, veteran actor Phil Lamar, returns oh. as Freeman, of course, tonight, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Freeman, and also plays the first officer of the Archimedes. Lauren Lapkus is back as Jennifer Shurian, and we, um, we'll talk about her plot line a little later. Carl Tart is back as Kayshawn, and that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think about First First Contact? Double first contact. Uh, double, doubly first. Um, wow, there's a <clears throat> there's a lot going on in this episode. Is kind of my initial it was a, thought. Yeah, it was a pop boiler. Um, which I was a little kind of. It's a lot to take in for um, a finale. I feel like, um, but you know, um. I liked the teaser at the beginning. I thought that was, like, really strong uh, and kind of, like, got you... <laughs> they had a teaser? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But it was it was a really nice, dramatic teaser. And um, uh, <laughs> I guess I kind of enjoyed this stuff with, like, uh, Mariner and her mom. Uh, you know, like, her being kind of a dick and, like, just, like, telling uh, the bridge crew that guess what? My mom's getting a promotion and she's not taking any of you with her and, you know, that sort of thing. And, um... Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, why now? Yeah, why couldn't this have been something that why we stretched out even, like... No, please don't know. stretch it out anymore. Like, yeah. I thought that season two had done a, a fairly good job of uh, introducing detente into their relationship. Like, we get... The idea of a character who is precocious and then nobody wants to, like, you know, serve on a ship with their mom or whatever. Right. Um, but, like, how long can you go with that without making Mariner seem like a squeaky asshole, you know? Right. And I thought that we had gone a long way towards building more of a relationship between yeah. them. It's never going to be fully comfortable, but it's fine. And, sure, you can argue that, like, well, her suddenly leaving is like, well, that's really going to shake that uh, kind of understanding that they have and she's going to revert back to type. But it's like we've, we've just done this over and over again. Yeah, it does kind of feel like Mariner we've done acting this... like a brat and trying to spoil things for her mom. It's like I, we have to go back to that beat. Like that has Mike been watching his tug. own show? Yeah, right. Um... Yeah, I mean, why go back to that well now? I don't know. I, I On that note. Yeah. I didn't prepare anything for this. On that note, uh, Tendi over here is something that Dr. T says. Yeah. And she goes, oh, no, my job's in trouble. And then we just I do that. I feel and like we've seen that a it lot. Turns out, it turns out it wasn't that. Turns out yeah. her job's fine. In fact, she's doing a great job. She's getting promoted. I mean, at least we finally position. can't do that anymore because Tendi is like now moving on to a new like classification. So we won't be able to go back to like, oh no, she Dr. T looked at me the wrong way. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble, everybody. Unless I'd like to see a new character beat for Tendi, is what I'm saying. I, I would do. I would do. She just gets freaked out about everything and runs away. Well, and... usually about one thing, but yeah. Well, yeah. Um, her and Rutherford exploring the ship, that was kind of sweet, but it didn't really go anywhere except that they're kind of where they need to be when I'm, they overhear a mariner and her mom yeah, fighting. Yeah. In the uh, in the captain's yacht. Yeah. What? Does a California class have a captain's yacht? Doesn't seem like it would. I always got the impression that like a galaxy class has a captain's yacht because it is the biggest, most expensive ship that they've ever made. Like, this is the Queen Mary QE2 of Starfleet. And so even the the captain has his own ship on the ship. 
Right. But like the Cerritos, the <laughs> Cerritos as a captain's is yacht, like... if they had made a joke about it being like a dinky two seater, like an, with an outboard motor, like that would have been okay, good. But like, or like, a why joke... does it have a captain's yacht? You know why it has it? So we can see it. I, okay. I felt like um, this episode was like fan fiction. Once the Borg get their hands on it and like soup it up and put like a trans warp engine on it, like this is the most complete piece of fan fiction ever made. We've got mm. a captain's yacht on the boat. Yeah. We've got we, Cetacean Ops is canon now because <laughs> Lower Decks is canon. I know. So Cetacean Ops is real. I just feel like Mike McMahon got paper cuts like flipping through the TNG technical manual. Like, ah, what else can we put in there? Ah, I know. Oh, we're we're going to strip all the panels off the ship because, ah, you know, we can't do a saucer. I'm going to reinvent saucer separation and we're going to do something else. We're going right. to separate the hull from the entire ship. Well, I, you know, I It did... just felt like, okay, you love Star – we all love Star Trek. I did appreciate that we weren't like disconnecting the saucer because I feel like we see that a lot. So I, I appreciated them three times, twice. I think actually <laughs> is it just twice? It seems like more. I don't know. And in the movies, I guess we saw it. Yeah. Um, we even get the shot with this is like you know this was like exterior hull. This must be in final cut. You know the maneuvering uh, jet cam. Yeah. Where you you know the the camera or the virtual camera is is, is you know rooted to the to the hull. And then the the jets go off, and so the the space field sort of twists as the it's adjusting its attitude. Right, right. You know that that uh, that Battlestar Galactica shot. <laughs> it's just like, oh man, okay, okay, sticky jam fingers all Too over much? this thing. Okay. It almost drowns what is, I think, a pretty good, a pretty plotty, but a pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a plot episode in a season of plot episodes, and we've yes. talked about that, like all season on this show that like the show seems to be growing more into being a Star Trek show, which is to say right. not just like, here's a joke about an Andorian, but like, here's a plot that is a Star Trek plot and we can do jokes and we're going to do all that. But also we have to need to kind of push this plot forward, be it a science thing or a mission or, or whatever it is. They've kind of gone back and forth on that, but like there's been, a lot of episodes this year that are just like, this is just clearly like a mini TNG episode. Mm-hmm. Do you like when the show does that or, or do you want, want it to be more uh, kind of balls out comedy? Um, I feel like you've talked about this on the show before. But yeah, but you talk about it. Well, I, I know, but I was just going to say, I think it needs to kind of pick at least, if not episodes to do focus on one thing, at least um storylines to focus on one thing you know like be super plotty or uh be a balls out comedy and like don't try to juggle both um and i yeah uh, like um menage troy isn't trying to land any uh, (laughs) isn't i'm sure i can't remember in that episode like i'm sure they have to hang around to get uh Troy and and Luxana and Riker back, but somebody needs a vaccine somewhere else, and so that's the the right. phantom ticking clock. But right. there isn't anything they're trying to ram through at the same time. No, yeah. right, exactly. It's just so, a funny episode. It, it's hard to. I think it's hard to to or keep... like fascination. Sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Another great example. Uh, fascination, I think it is on DS Nine, the one where um, uh, everybody gets hit with Cupid's love bow because Luxana Troy's going through. Uh, Beta Z menopause, and so right. her telepathy affects everybody. Right. Nothing else is really happening on in that episode. It's they're just celebrating Bajoran Life Day or, or whatever. Right. There's nothing else that's like super important that's going on, or that you need to pay attention to, or is yeah. going to be critical to the end. Like plot, uh, so. <laughs> like Sonia Gomez's ship augering it into the new planet that they're at, which is like, dear God, <laughs> that's like the that's critical. I mean, that if if you uh, it's way worse than spilling your your coffee or your tea. Okay. On All right, Captain Picard. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Why? Why did they have to do that? That joke. Yes. Because they always have to do that. But, they but have that's... to be like, see, see, look, it's that thing. Right, but like, just do, just casting, shout the character. Casting Captain Sonia Gomez. That's the bit, isn't it? Just like bringing be. a character back who has been out of the franchise for 35 years that that itself is is a bit 
Um, you don't have then an ensign like trip and she goes, don't worry, ensign, I've done worse. And like, the, no, take out that cell where she looks at the camera. That's dumb. Uh, to, you have, it's comedy. You have to top it. You know, she should yeah. have an entire terrain of chili spilled on her. Yeah. By some, right. <laughs> by some ensign. Or here's another bit. Maybe she's never broken the habit and she's just spilling things on her crew members in every scene. <laughs> so she's like, quick, hard to port. You know, she just splashes oh the guy God. in the face with coffee and he's like, ah, I sir. <laughs> You know, that's the joke. Like, right. That's the joke you put on the joke. She's an amazing captain, but she will spill something yeah, on you. Yeah, everybody has to wear tarps the yeah. entire time. Right, yeah. right. Get your Mac on. I mean, that is funny, but is that, quote, punching down at Star Ugh, Trek? I don't... We've, we've stopped does, asking does, that question. Does that... What does that even mean anymore? We've stopped I don't asking that know. question. Anyways... We, we, we haven't asked it until you've come on again, so thanks. Um, okay, I had, a, I had something I wanted to talk about with... Tendi. Um, uh, Rutherford. Rutherford. Yes. Um, so he's. We kind of had this runner. This this. He season. has a real problem. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he's got a real problem, and he he keeps getting these alerts, and then he can't see, and he's he's not getting his work done, and it's like he's mm. saving, du- triply saving his memories of Tindy. We find out. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to forget her, yeah. which is. Which is really sweet, but it's like, okay, and... Um, I have multiple copies of all my pictures, but that's just because of how Android phones talk to Microsoft systems. Like, And then, of course, I've got the Google God. Cloud, so I, don't I, even I just... I think about I can't... It. They're like rabbits. I just can't stop deleting pictures. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways. Does he have um, half a brain, like a uh, robot brain, like... I don't know. Like we Vedic? don't really know. And yeah. then, like, he he's like... I guess Billy like talks to him, and so he decides as they're running because he can't freaking see. I'm gonna just hit this thing. Yeah. And then we see this vision. He's like, "Oh, I think I saw something." Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hook. It's a plot hook. That's fine. That's that's good. That's good. I mean, you're this is the finale. Want to give people reasons? Plot to come hook back. is 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 good, but like nothing bad happened once he no and he it. and he didn't and it wasn't even a decision that he made like uh we rutherford you know to implement your plan to get rid of all the hull plating you know we have to download this applet into you that's right. 99 bytes uh or quads or whatever and you've got 98 quads of storage left so you're gonna have to delete your pictures and he has to like make a choice to do it instead of just like i literally will fall off the ship if i don't do this yeah beep, 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 beep. yeah that's that was a bad construction uh just from a meta perspective i I'm I'm really worried about him. Like I don't understand. I don't know what the state of like um, TBI treatment and like brain lobe replacement is right. in the uh, 24th century. But it, this is a a dystopia for him. Like how does he how does he live day to day? This this sounds t- he's got to save his memories, but he's only got X amount of of room. I know he so, saved like yeah. a th- triple copies, but okay. So one season, right? That means he's got. Three seasons left if he deletes all the copies before he has to delete it all anyway. No, you're right. What kind of life is this? It's not great. Does he have the Does he have Arium brain? Remember, Arium had to save some of her core memories, and then every day she would like oh, kind of yeah. delete the stuff that didn't matter. Which that's kind of enviable, I guess. That is kind I could of get enviable. rid of Spice World. No, I don't know. Spice World's kind of funny. I don't know why I picked up Spice World. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give it no time to die. Yeah, there you go. Um. So anyway, like here's – okay. So I don't know. Th- clearly, since they're bringing things to a close or they're moving things forward in this episode, uh, Ella is going to just – she's going to cry when she you know yeah. hears that they didn't do anything with the Boimler clones. I was very, I was upset. I was very bullish on that. But yeah. But um, they've – one and done. They're They're super besties and that's all it is. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that too. I just – you know, the language of TV – Yes. Gives you to expect that there will be some kind of tension. Yes. But I think it's really cool that they're just hetero life mates. That's fine. And yeah, and they're just having a good time. Yeah. I, I'm really worried about his brain still, <laughs> but at least he can still come up with, uh, you know, genius ideas like, uh, you know, stripping the, the ship down so it can get through the the rocks. Magnetic rocks? Magnetic rocks. Yeah. It's right. Problem. Magnets. Yeah. They don't know how they work. 21st yeah, century. Rutherford came up with that whole idea while he had still had all the things coming up in his face. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, also, like, the captain kind of took credit for it. 
<laughs> well, you know, that's the captain's prerogative. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, but I was kind of like, Captain Freeman, what the hell? Uh, um, yeah, I... What the okay the the are they dolph they're dolphins right in the Star Trek universe uh, they're whales I guess technically uh, so is that like a reference to to the movie with the whales <laughs> so it's a reference to a reference oh my god so I don't remember if this was f- for Phase Two or if, if it was for the the technical manual but you know after they save the whales in Star Trek Four right. And basically just tell us that, like, they're intelligent. Like, Spock can have a conversation with them. Like, they're, they don't so have hands, Rutherford but they're, they're sentient. Right. And so after that, it became a joke. Like, they were going to have um, uh, cetacean ops was going to be one department, you know, on the ship. And again, this is on a galaxy class where maybe you can spare a couple decks for a huge where tank are that all whales of these live things? in. <laughs> but that being said, uh, I did like the fact that it's like, they're not taking it seriously, and the whales are just there for jokes. And whereas <laughs> yeah, I was a little are. weirded out, and don't at me about sex and Trek. I know there's sex in Star Trek. I just don't understand, like, when you make a kind of lame, like, hot tub joke about the whales, and you and they keep doing it, and it's still not really funny. Maybe if we had gone 12 more times, like, them being <laughs> like, hey, well, boy, you sure look sweaty. Why don't you take your clothes off and get in here? Like, maybe a couple more times it would have been funny, but we just didn't have time to, like... Have that really sink in. Yeah, it wasn't fun. But I did like, you know, they, they did have some of the best laughs in, in, in the thing. Like when they, <laughs> okay, it doesn't make sense, but after Boimler drowns and they, they go, hey, he needs help. Uh, don't let him dry out. Put water on him. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> why, why'd you take him out of the pool in the first place? Right. But, okay, it's fine. <laughs> and the only payoff, as far as I'm concerned, to the Captain Freeman thing, which is when he's like, what are you guys doing for Captain Freeman Day? It's like, oh, that's for calves. Yeah. <laughs> That was pretty good. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, I think that was the only thing. It's just another too. thing. It's like, it's just weird. It's just a weird thing. Yeah, it is a weird thing. I thought that Boimler being super excited about Captain Freeman Day and then like doing his childish banner and being super excited that the captain know it was him was kind of a weird thing. But right. is Boimler, whatever. Um, so. Um, I don't know. I feel like if he really wanted to impress the captain being good friends with Mariner, there are other ways to, he, he could do that, you know? Yeah. Did he seem really devastated that uh, Captain Freeman was, was going to transfer? He seemed, like, excited for her, I think. Um, I guess there will be a new captain to have a captain's day for. Oh, God. Yeah, I felt, I mean, that was, it was kind of a bummer ending, to say the least, um, like yeah, the way it ended. Uh, you know, it's 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 an open ending. It's an open ending. It's to be continued, and they do. I I get it. I mean, a lot of um, live action Trek shows did this too. It's a better they... hook than than last year. It is. It'll keep people coming back for sure. Because um, they just immediately, you know, we know knew they were going to do this, but they just immediately reversed everything that happened last year to get everybody back together, which mm. makes sense. Which they'll probably do next year, but at yeah. least there's, um, you know, there's a. Um, a hook, there's a question being asked that has to be answered. I mean... And not just, I guess I don't like being on the Titan. Great. Y- yeah, right. Uh, I changed my mind. Great. Okay. Well, um, it's a Starfleet. You can go wherever you want and do whatever you want. Apparently. We have learned this. Uh, how in the world are... Are the Packlids, like, actually genius? Like, what is going on, like... Who, like, made it seem like she... There's a lot of people that are not bomb. happy about the Packlids. I am one of them. I'm raising for, my hand for, for a couple of different for reasons. For diverse reasons. Yeah. Um, but I bet if you asked Mike McMahon, he'd tell you, you just gotta wait. It's all gonna pay off. You'll see. You'll see. And, like, having this I've whole thing waiting. where their planet blows up <laughs> could be just a way to get rid of them all because everybody hates them. Or it could be a way to be like, oh no, you'll you'll see. Oh, the, the, that the longest con is that they're dumb. Uh huh. Which okay. would be dumb it, itself. Y- but, yes. Yeah. I I agree. I just it's supposed to be funny, but I don't find it funny. I don't find the packlets funny. I don't find them amusing, and I also feel like. Are we supposed to be laughing at them because they're not very smart? And I feel like 
I feel like that's a really ill choice. If dumb people aren't funny anymore, what's Will Sasso going to do for a career? Well, here's the thing. You want to take food out of Will Sasso's mouth? No. I think I think dumb people can be funny for sure. Like, and <laughs> what? I'd like to quote you on that. Now, okay, dumb characters. Let me put it that way. But like, give them something else to do, or like, have them be charming in another way. You know what I mean? Well, the funny thing is, and it's not funny, is that if maybe the solution wasn't to spray red gas all over them, maybe the solution was to say. Hi, well, we have a pretty lady and some big guys in yellow shirts who are going to come over and talk to you about what's 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 going on. What's going on with you guys? Yeah. You know, what do you what do you want? Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe help them and like foster and uplift them into a world that could join the Federation instead of just apparently leaving them to their own devices to pull their lame scams on everybody until they get enough guns to try to take over the Federation or whatever it is they try to do. I like know. that's that's literally um what is it like? Uh, hashtag bad guy Starfleet. Let's start that. Oh my Let's gosh! Let's start that. Yeah. Uh, watching Star, uh, watching all the characters say we are Starfleet every week, like that means something. And then watching what Starfleet does every week, which is their leadership is is corrupt, and they are trying to like steal eternal life planets from people who live there, or steal yeah. dilithium and resources, or just leaving species who clearly need help, like the Romulans. Uh, or whoever, you know, just hanging them out to dry. Um, a couple robots killed some people, so we got to get rid of all sentient robots everywhere. Right. Um, yeah, bad guy Starfleet. Let's let's look into that. But this is, I don't know, like, does Lower Decks want to do that or not? I would say, well, let's not do that on a comedy show. Let's just have fun. Right. But it seems like half the time they want to do stuff like that. So if they want to well, do stuff like that. But if they're going to pull it off, that's fine but wow it's taking the longest road to get there yeah i don't know i my after two years of this my opinion of lower decks is you can only do so much in 22 minutes yeah that's very or true. however long the episodes are i will and say so i think that you should you know limit yourself uh how many b c and d plots did you have running around on star trek the animated series mm-hmm. <laughs> not many and those were written by like Hugo and Saturn Award winning writers, you know, they weren't trying to do all that much. I think my favorite Lower Decks episodes are are ones that are more character driven um, and uh, where we get to learn a little bit more about the characters and it's not so plotty. Um, you know, like the, the one this season, I'm really bad with names, but the one this season where... Um, so are they. Mariner and Tendi are um, spending a lot of time together, and we see that like Tendi is actually can be really mean <laughs> and like can kick people's butts and sure. stuff like that. Yeah, um, and they get to know each other a little bit better. Um, yeah, I think that that that's that's fun um, because I feel like we don't know a whole lot about these characters. So yeah, well, I mean, we know what we know. What does under arrest Waxahachi mean? What? <laughs> I wrote under arrest and then Waxahachi. I have no idea. Clearly something that, about the captain? That was a, a fat finger or something that <laughs> Autocrack was like, you're on your own. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just I, like... You watch. We do have to do it. We always go back to Modoc, right? <laughs> Modoc, the do. premier uh, family uh, sci-fi comedy that manages to do a plot. You know, pulls off plots mm. uh, in a half an hour every yeah. week, and the and have a through plot, have real the stakes. Yeah, have a meta plot. Yeah, have actual stakes, and yet end up being hilarious. Yes. And I, they just make it look so easy, you know? And meanwhile, you're writing a Lower Decks and you're like, is this too funny? Is this punching up? Is this punching down? Or do we have enough Star Trek in it? And I don't know, man. But, like, I just feel like, you know, Lower Decks in this episode specifically is trying to prove that Lower Decks got big pants now. Lower Decks is 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 a real Star Trek show. Well, and it is a real Star Trek show. It is. But I wish it's a Star Trek show that could, like, find... You know, it's. I wish. I hope things work out for Lower Decks. I wish it was more confident that it's a real Star Trek show. Um, it didn't feel like it had to fling references around. You didn't feel like Sonia every... Gomez telling her Ensign that it's okay that she dropped something. 
I, <laughs> I, I honestly, I didn't okay. even like, okay. I was like, what? Okay. Uh, yeah. And then, and then also like Tindy was like immediately when, um, the doctor was like, I, uh, you know, you're going to, you know, you're too smart to be here and you're going to be, uh, <laughs> and you know, you're going to learn to be a science officer on the bridge. Uh, and she was like, Oh, like Jadzia Dax. And she was like, Oh, what? No, I don't know who that is. Like Spock. And then like, then we got like two references. Well, we got two references. And then like when she said, who the hell's that? I was like, Oh, g- good. That was kind Fin-ly, of funny. Finally, somebody in this world is, it establishes that our, our characters are the weird ones. Yeah, right. You know, the whole premise, it's like Voyager. The whole premise of Lower Decks is that they're on the Lower Decks. Yeah. And yet Freeman can do everything and saves the day every single week. One of the uh, moments I loved in this uh, episode was when they're on the bridge and the this disaster happens. The Archimedes yeah. is hurling, hurtling towards this planet. And everybody in the bridge has no idea. And the captain's even like, uh, what, do you, what do you think, Beckett? And she's like... I don't know. I know. Because that was she's actually an kind of refreshing. Who, she's an ensign who works in the lower decks. Yeah. I think it's okay that they don't know everything all I the do. time. I, absolutely. But it's but they do, there are people, it's fine that they are the ultimate Star Trek fans. They're the audience proxy. Like, it annoys me sometimes, but I get that that's what they should be. So when Dr. Yeah. Tan is like, what are you talking about? I was like, great. And then she's like, I like Spock. Oh, my God. Like, I know. I know. You should have ended the joke right there. Never, ever trust Lower Decks. Don't turn your back on it. Uh, anything else you can think of to say before we move on here? Because we got places to be. Um. Well, I do you want to talk about um, Jennifer, uh, the oh, Andorian? Oh, yeah. I mentioned that. But yeah. it, it's, it's a big nothing, isn't it? Like we set up. I don't know. Is it? This off-screen running gag. Like the um, Abed is delivering a baby in the background of Community episode. Well, yeah, right. Uh, and then, you know, she's voiced by Lauren Lapkus, but like, and then she comes back and, oh, thank God we mended the fence with Jennifer. It's like, <laughs> it was just a funny thing where she just yells off screen at Jennifer. It was never, I don't, what a big nothing. It, it, yeah. <laughs> well, do you think that like, um, that, that, that Beckett, uh, likes her romantically because it oh, was because it like the way that she was she was like oh do you like me and know. like the way well, she said that and then yeah. Beckett was like demurred so I wasn't sure. Uh, my friend Liz Barr says uh, you don't get a cookie for holding hands. <laughs> you know That's I mean? that is excellent. The last episode of of your entire season, somebody's holding hands with somebody else. It's like no cookie for that. So. So I don't know. Um, I think they'll I, I like probably, that. you know, what they're doing. They'll just wait to see how the Twitter sphere reacts, and then they'll just move either way, depending on that. Well, I think you're going to get a lot of thumbs up, and you're probably going to get a lot of thumbs down because there. You'll are... get more thumbs up than thumbs down. I think though. you'll get more thumbs up. So than then, thumbs speaking down of Twitter, too. something I love about Twitter is one of the main uh, pieces of key art. You know, the images they released for this episode features uh, the Freemans talking to uh, Sonia Gomez. Uh-huh. And in many of these uh, <laughs> pictures online, they um, blanked out Sonia. They put a Cerritos T-shirt over her face because, like, we don't want any spoilers. And then you what? see the picture and you're like, how the hell would I know who that is? <laughs> All the faces on this show look the same anyway. She's talking to her ensign and it's just two women with different styled dark hair. How am I supposed to know? Oh, but what a spoiler. I Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> she doesn't have, like, a visor you know, or like, uh, she doesn't, it, she, oh my God, it's Echeb. <laughs> well, but even like, honestly, I guess if you put her animated character next to what she looked like on they should TNG. should bring Echeb back. That would really piss people off. Oh, that would really Do piss not people. bring Echeb no, back. No, we're done. Do not. We're Thank done. God that lady killed him. Sorry, go ahead. Because the actor isn't that great, but. Uh... Right, see, that's. <laughs> no. You had to lower Dex it. Everybody got. <laughs> Everybody got what was going on. Okay. Anyway, but like you, you don't necessarily. She doesn't necessarily look like the actress, the animated character. You know, like it's not recognizably her. Yeah, I guess she kind of does, but it's not the she first kind person of I would does, think of. But it's not. Yeah, exactly. What a spoiler. What a spoiler. What a spoiler indeed. I don't know. Maybe what some a, what fans would have been like, "I know was. who that is." Yeah. 
Got us right in. <laughs> well, I think that's it for our show this season. Thanks for joining us, listeners. And if you like what you hear, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at EISTPOD for updates and to get notified when new episodes of both Enterprising Individuals and Discoverage are released. And you can tweet to us on the show by using the hashtag, hashtag Discoverage, or email us at EISTPOD at gmail.com. Also, while you're on the internet, why not head to your listening platform of choice and subscribe to our show feed and give us a rating and a review because it really helps us out. If you want to help the show grow, stop by our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash EIST pod. And as always, if you like the show, tell a friend. Lower Deck Season 2 is over, but Discoverage will return on October 28th for the premiere episode of Star Trek Prodigy. It's an episode entitled Lost and Found. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a box with one shoe in it. It's no, be, I think they're going to be. A ship was lost, but some people were found. Yes, and that, very poetic. That episode will feature not only the main cast that was previously announced, but also the voice talents of Jason Alexander, Ooh. Jamila Jamil, and oh David my... Diggs. Okay, cool. And of course, Robert Beltran as Captain Chakotay. Uh, all right, Chakotay. I won't say anything else. We'll be here that Thursday to cover it. We'll be going live once again at 8 p.m. Central, so join us then. You can follow us on Facebook or on Twitter at EIST Pod to get notified when we're live and broadcasting. In the meantime, check out our main show at Enterprising Individuals at enterprisingindividuals.com. Every Wednesday on the show, I and a special guest discuss in excruciating detail a selected episode from a Star Trek series. We also have news from the Trek sphere and interviews with special guests. And our latest episode has just dropped. On it, I'm joined by Liz Barr of the Antimatter Pod podcast, Sasha Wood of Casually Comics, and writer Stephanie Roller to talk about Star Trek fan fiction. It's something I didn't know much about, but all three of them are experts and fanfic writers themselves, nice. and we talk about the influence and importance of fanfic in Star Trek. You can hear that episode at enterprisingindividuals.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Mika, thanks as always for joining me <coughs> to <coughs> croak out and die oh, to no. talk about tonight's episode of Lower Decks. Uh, yeah, remind people, for me. you're welcome to be here. Uh, <laughs> remind people where they can find you online. Yeah, you can find me at Mika and Hana on Twitter and at justenoughtrope.com. And uh, Sailor Noob is uh, noob underscore sailor at both uh, Twitter and Instagram and just Sailor Noob on Facebook. Great. What is coming up on Just Enough Trope? Yeah. So in the spirit of Halloween, we are looking back at the original members of Marvel's Legion of Monsters. <laughs> Legion of Monsters. Spooky. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> yeah. The Monster Mash. I, I just I get all of the Halloween songs in my head at once. Uh, so we will be reading, um, I think we're reading the first issues of uh, Ghost Rider, Man-Thing, Morbius the Living Vampire, and Werewolf by Night. Werewolf by Night. Not by day, by night. No, he's, uh, uh, he, I think he's uh, a, a, a potter by day. A milliner. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> his, uh, his name is Jack Russell. Shut up. I said that like Norm MacDonald. His name is Jack Russell. You sure did. Uh, and uh, somebody pointed like to... Like a terrier? That's all yeah, I can think of. Somebody pointed out to Jerry Conway, I think years after the character debuted, they're like, did you name your werewolf character after a dog? And he's like, I don't have a dog. I, is that is that a dog? Stop playing dumb. Well, there was no internet back then. Maybe he didn't know what a Jack Russell terrier was. But, uh, okay. All right. never seen Wishbone. <laughs> there was no wishbone. So he at didn't that time. die. Don't yeah. blame Jerry. But yeah, that sounds okay. that sounds great. Uh, right. That seventies um, Marvel horror stuff is uh, is right up my alley. Not the hairiest of dogs, Jack Russell Terriers. They're they're, they're not very hairy. So dog's not that shaggy. <laughs> Well, that's uh, it for our show. Thank God. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you when Star Trek Prodigy debuts. And we're signing off. This is Aaron from Mika saying live long and prosper. 